I'm Jim Campbell. I'm a co-chair of the ontology work group along with Michelle Morris of the University of Pittsburgh. And welcome. Um, we're very grateful that you uh, joined us this morning. Uh, we've got a full agenda. Uh, we're going to give a brief overview of our activities for the past 12 months. Um, then uh, Sham and Matvi are going to uh, talk about um, ontology response to uh, COVID-19, um, followed by a presentation from Cancer Care Manitoba. Mary Natividad and I will be talking about some ontology development uh, for oncology. Um, our work group members are number about 20. Uh, we've had um, active members all year uh, doing lots of work that they're going to share with you today. Um, we uh, have bi-weekly or monthly meetings, um, and generally they're on the third Thursday of the month. Um, if you're interested in joining the ontology work group, uh, drop me an email. You see my uh, address listed down below there. Some of the things that we've been doing this past year have been uh, have included uh, developing educational resources for the community. Matt V will tell you a little bit about those. Um, we've been distributing updates to um, ONC ontologies, um, especially ICD, SNOMED, and LOINC, uh, with special attention to COVID-19. Um, we've published some tooling and metadata resources for the on, uh, ontology cell. Um, we've been looking at some um, alternative methods for efficient I2B2 searching. I noticed that Hubert Hickman um, is one of our attendees. Hubert and I authored a paper um, a few years back um, on uh, alternative uh, methods for I2B2 searching. I would also mention that I'm stepping down as co-chair this year, so we're looking for volunteers. And if you have interest in that, again, drop me an email. Our first update is from Michelle Morris of the University of Pittsburgh. Um, Michelle, you wanna to talk to us about um, ACT? Sure. Um, so a quick update. The ACT grant ended last month, but the network is still gonna remain operational. So we have about 50 sites on the production network and we have a few more, maybe a handful more sites that are still working towards joining. Um, our accomplishment for this year was mostly just the release of version four of the ACT ontology, which um, included uh, for our existing ontologies, the labs, the meds, the uh, procedures, we added the historical concepts and new concepts up to version UMLS version 2020 AB. Um, we updated the COVID ontology, included the vaccines and some of the therapies and some other medications. We added a few new domains, including social determinants of health, which included just uh, primary insurance and smoking status. We also included vital signs, and we included a new little folder to try to help users to determine how complete the data they're querying is. So we have a folder that will allow you to quickly find out uh, patients with at least one diagnosis, one lab or one procedure. Next slide. Next slide, Jim. Yeah, for some reason I won't admit, there we go. Uh, I think it, it went to, I think it went to. Sorry about that. There you go. Yeah. So the other thing, um, wrapping up the build of the ACT over OMOP ontology, this ontology will allow uh, sites to use OMOP as their common data model to be queried on the network. We already have one site or maybe two sites, but one site for sure that is already an OMOP site that tested out the first version of this ontology at UVA. Um, it's built using the I2B2 multi-fact table work that 
Lori Phillips had created. Um, but I modified a couple of the views and added two new views to accommodate the COVID ontology. And I did something a little different um, where it maps primarily to OMOP standard concept IDs, but only if the source terminology maps one-to-one -to, -one to the standard concept ID. Otherwise it will map to the non-standard concept ID. So, um, and that's what this is showing like at typhoid arthritis, you see it's only mapped to the non-standard. So, so that should be read soon um, for sites to take. Next slide. So um, the things that we're working on now, uh, mostly documentation. We haven't had much time to do documentation, but I'm gonna be working on that. Uh, and we worked on a project this year with data quality and Jeff Klan had upgraded the total num scripts and he's hoping that the community will um, take them up and run them uh, at each data refresh. Um, he worked on a dashboard for data quality and we also did some network queries. So sometime hopefully this summer we'll be releasing and sending out reports to show sites their quality and how, you know, how they compare to the other sites within the network. Um, UAB is also working on like a usable ontology project that will be looking for volunteers to play with uh, ontologies or crowdsourced ontologies on the test network. And then we're gonna start working on our new ontologies. Um, probably fee codes, just a typo on this next one, the HPO, and then act over the PCORI CDM. So that's all we have. Thank you, Michelle. Um, mm -hmm. Next, uh, from Trinetics, um, we've got a report from Matvi Palchuk. Matvi. Thank you, Jim, <clears throat> and thank you, Michelle. Um, so very quickly, by the way of introduction, Trinetics is a global network of clinical patient data for use in research. Um, clinical data is our asset. <clears throat> We've been able to grow the network membership and the size of, of the data on the network, probably mainly because uh, Trinetics builds a very safe ecosystem where uh, healthcare organizations feel uh, safe and secure to share clinical data and then to be able to take advantage of, of the availability of that data. Um, we, as many of you know, are sort of off this community. We announced Trinetics at one of these conferences quite a while ago now. Uh, so it's a pleasure to be here uh, yet again, undoubtedly would be better in person. Um, uh, when it comes to I2B to support, Trinetics uh, continues to use I2B to, as a source of data for, uh, for our network, not the sole one, but if your organization has a mature I2B to, it's very easy to onboard to Trinetics. Uh, and we also continue to support our I2B to sites with updated ontologies that represent the content in Trinetics uh, terminology. Uh, there's obviously been a lot of focus on COVID-19 response. We quickly put together a whole network comprised mainly of US, but also some uh, European uh, and other global sites that made uh, clinical data available uh, for COVID researchers. We've been closely involved with uh, other initiatives like for example, N3C, helping our sites to uh, contribute data for COVID research. Um, as far as uh, sort of the, the year up to date uh, update, the talk I've given last year at this conference has been transcribed uh, with help of Jay Peterson at Nebraska. We tried to put it down on paper so it's a little bit better available. You can find it on the community wiki. There's a link to it here in the first bullet. Uh, I've been trying to maintain a list of all the new codes uh, in Google Sheets over the last uh, year and a half. 
I'll spend a little bit of time on this uh, in the next presentation to give you an idea of what's in there. And of course, a lot of effort has gone into working side by side with our data providers on making sure that data regarding COVID-19 flows through the network. So encouraging them to update their local terminologies and their EMRs, <clears throat> ensure that the data comes out of the EMRs in a sensible fashion, keeping Trinetics terminology and the rest of the stack up to date to accept that data, kind of trying to think ahead and gear up for, for things that, that are obviously coming, such as you know, the case last winter with, with COVID vaccinations. So it's been, it's been a very busy year. Um, that's it. Madri, thank you. Um, next, if I can get the slide to advance. Shoot. Uh, we have a report on Axiomedic from Keith Elliston. Keith. <clears throat> Thanks, Jim. Uh, first, let me just say I, uh, I really appreciate the effort that uh, the Jim puts into the uh, to the ontology working group uh, and Michelle as well. Uh, this is a fantastic resource for the community. Uh, I think once you start working with these platforms, you understand the, the real challenges around keeping ontologies up to date, using appropriate ontologies, etc. So it's a it's a great working group. And Jim, I want to thank you for your service there. It's really been fantastic. Uh, I hate to see you step down. Um, in terms of what Axiomatics has been doing here, we have been doing a fair amount of work with uh, with OMOP and ACT ontologies on ITB2. Um, one of the things I was going to ask Michelle uh, is the one of the challenges we've had is people being interested in using OMOP and ACT on ITB2 specifically uh, to participate in things like All of Us. And one of the key challenges uh, there is that All of Us is on OMOP 5.2, not on OMOP 6. Uh, which is, you know, actually has substantial changes. And so that's a, a challenge when you're looking at OMOP and ACT on ITB2, uh, just something to be aware of. Um, we are in the process of upgrading uh, our customers to the ACT COVID ontology. I think the, the work that uh, UPMC and Michelle have been doing there to update ACT for COVID and work through the testing and whatnot there has been a real fantastic uh, value add. Um, so I think that's really tremendous. Uh, one of the key things we've been uh, focused on in this space is the integration of ITB2 and Transmart. I think Peter Rice will be speaking about that um, uh, overall. But uh, one of the key challenges there obviously is namespaces and uh, how we link the clinical and translational uh, namespaces so that we can really interoperate between ITB2 and Transmart. And the goal of that group is to have a single database uh, that would include both clinical and translational data allow you to select cohorts in I2B2 and then use the, the Transmart tools for analysis of translational data. So clearly uh, the, the namespaces and the semantics of how data are loaded there uh, are quite critical. And so we're looking at standardizing a number of the, uh, the ontologies used for, for loading Transmart data. Uh, another key activity for us has been supporting all of us. Um, all of us has been continuing to grow. Uh, it's a, you know, the, the national cohort. Um, one of the key things that we've been doing is working with clients to help streamline submissions for all of us. Um, our hope had been to actually leverage I2B2 uh, in some of this. Uh, the challenge there has been that uh, I2B2 supports um, a subset uh, of OMOP um, and the out of the box support has been for OMOP 6. And so I'd, I'd love to see if there are ways to extend the, uh, the I2B2 data model to include more of the OMOP CDM, particularly when it comes to, to all of us. I think that's a growing program and an important one. And then finally, an area that we've been working on uh, quite substantially has been uh, a collaboration we have with Ingentium uh, around EHR uh, knowledge graphs. Uh, the key thing here is being able to translate uh, EHR data into a graph database um, using uh, standard semantics and then link these in a knowledge graph to uh, elements like mesh terms, uh, various uh, literature-based knowledge bases, et cetera. And so this number one allows you to scale you know, very uh, dramatically in terms of the amount of data one can efficiently query um, in an EHR and allows you to uh, transition from uh, medical concepts into uh, research concepts, into literature, um, et cetera. So this is something that we have a collaboration ongoing uh, with Mayo Clinic 
And one of the first areas we're working here is on a, a clinical decision support system for tuberculosis, which is driven by uh, an EHR uh, knowledge graph uh, combined with a tuberculosis uh, uh, drug treatment, uh, drug sensitivities uh, knowledge graph uh, integrated and using inferencing on that for the clinical decision support piece. So uh, what I could say is, is from the perspective of, of namespaces and ontologies, this is an incredibly important space. I encourage people uh, to get involved here. Uh, and it's been a fantastic resource for us as, as we've grown in our business. So thank you, thanks again to, to Jim and Michelle and, and to the foundation for sponsoring this group. Thank you for that, Keith. Um, and finally, in terms of our reports, Uh, University of Nebraska um, has been working to um, publish updated and timely versions of ONC uh, compliant um, ontologies for I2B2. Uh, we published those in a GitHub repository that you see referenced down below. Our most recent publications include SNOMED CT from January of this year. Um, the latest releases of ICD-10-CM, a comprehensive Rx norm NDC medications uh, metadata set, um, which is not based upon UMLS. Uh, we basically harvested it from historical files at NLM. Um, so it is complete going back to the origins of Rx norm and NDC. Uh, we are currently at LOINC 2.69, and um, we'll explain a little bit later that um, in conjunction with uh, Cancer Care Manitoba, we um, have deployed and are publishing ICD-03 and SNOMED CT um, uh, cancer ontologies, which we'll describe in a little bit more detail later. Um, a lot of our effort lately has been concentrated on deploying a tumor table, uh, which we'll also discuss um, with colleagues in our network um, at GPC. The University of Iowa is the lead on that. And we have um, enhanced um, those analytics tables with the I2B2 ontologies that uh, we'll discuss later. Um, and that is our report for um, um, the uh, work group. Um, I would ask our monitors, do we have any questions or chat that we uh, need to respond to? I'm not seeing any questions in the chat right now. Uh... If okay. anyone has any questions, feel free to raise your hand and, and we'll unmute you. Thank you. All right, well then we'll move on. Um, our next section is um, meeting the challenge of um, I2B2 ontology development for COVID-19. And we have Matvi and Sham that are going to present and I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Uh, Matvi, you can take 